What the hell happened yesterday? What the hell happened? Well, I'll set up I Randy a, with yeah, this. I had a thing to go do, and did I, like... Dibs picked the Jets. Okay, Dibs picked the Whatever, Jets. Whatever, we're not there yet. Yeah, so... That was but, a bad beat. No, what happened to the whole part about... So, Grandy, like, grabbed this microphone and started saying that Brock Purdy's better than Patrick Mahomes. Is that what happened? Grandy was great yesterday, first of all. Look, he's always great. And I... Well, except when he stabbed you in the back, that was awkward, no, but we worked through it. No, that's especially great. And then he laid out a case, and I hope he lays it out here again for you, because... You're a Brockistan, we know that. I'm and the king of Brockistan. But the way he does it is so much, I'm going to say it, more professional. Less snooty? It's what actually do you mean more professional? Just because it's stats? It's stats and facts. Oh, and you stats. know I love me some numbers. And as oh. we talked about yesterday, Good numbers Lord. are numbers. Yeah. Unless numbers are my numbers. Numbers, and then numbers are, are numbers. Numbers are numbers. And numbers, and numbers are, are numbers. numbers. Right. Unless they're my numbers, those are bigger. Well, yesterday, Grandy's numbers were numbers, and his numbers showed that Purdy greater than Mahomes. Take it away, Mark, with a C. Oh, through six games, there's no contest this year. Got him. That's, that's <laughs> like, <laughs> I love Lucas in the back. Got him. Totally. Okay. Brock yeah. Purdy has been more of a driving force behind the Niners' success than, the, than Patrick Mahomes has been for the Chiefs' success. Okay. Patrick Mahomes is not throwing the ball down the field at all. At all. Uh, he is the lowest, the lowest uh, average depth of target for starting quarterbacks in the NFL, essentially just how far you throw the ball down the field every time you drop back to throw. Lowest in the NFL, yet he somehow has six interceptions to six touchdowns. Brock Purdy has more touchdowns, has fewer interceptions, is throwing the ball much further down the field. In fact, more than any other starting quarterback in the NFL. He's completing passes at a slightly lower rate, but that's because he's throwing consistently tougher passes. Yet he's thrown fewer interceptions, thrown for more yards. He's ran for more yards. He has done the challenging better than Patrick Mahomes has done the simple. The only difference is the Chiefs are 5-0 and the Niners are 3-3. Three and three. But Brock Purdy has been the better quarterback through six weeks of the NFL season. Okay. I feel like I have two two nuts to try to crack here at the same time. because it Easy. Feels, no, I, l- listen. If you're going to call your kicker L. McPherson, it's 5 o'clock. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? We're doing everything that we want. I missed the 5 o'clock pop. No, go mean, ahead. You, so, first of all, um, your, uh, your quip that, uh, that Mark is making my point but doing it much more professional – Where's the part about the fact that everything he just said, everything he just said was true all of last year too. All of it. Go look it up. All of it. Numbers are numbers and the numbers have been the numbers. Right. They've been the numbers. And to be fair, what I did say yesterday, and Dib, you can back me up. I said it's been the case for a year and a half, except for the postseason and the Super Bowl. And Christmas, but yeah. So for, but well, I don't even remember what, what was what were Patrick's numbers in the playoffs. He wasn't that great. Well, Brock Purdy wasn't as good in yeah, in the yeah. postseason. And Patrick didn't. I mean, but again, um, when I, I can just feel where some people's brains would go when you go, all of these things are true except for their record. I mean, you and I have had this semantics conversation already. I'm apparently not allowed to say that the 49ers should be 5-1. and one, You can. Because the only thing that matters is their record. And if the only thing that matters is their record, then why are we why are we popping around with DVOA and QBR and CD to INT ratio? It's and because all, we're like, too married to the idea that the quarterback has a record. Like, the, the team has a record. I agree. So Mahomes has not been as good as Purdy, but Mahomes' team has been better than Purdy's team. And part of a team is not gacking away games when you should win. And those weren't pretty mistakes. I'm thinking about the loss to to the Rams, and I don't believe he made any of those nope. mistakes. Nope. And I'm thinking about the loss to Arizona, and yeah, he threw a late pick, and he should have gotten rid of the ball when he was blitzed from his front side. That was a mistake, but the game was mostly already lost before that. But you can put that partly on Brock Purdy, but I do think that all of us... Fans, commentators, and the rest of it, we get too married to quarterback record being the end-all be I, I agree completely. I, I, I agree 100%. Kansas City, as a team, has not been necessarily better, but they've won five games, mm. and part of that is being better where you need to be better. I see, I do, Yeah, I do think you know? they've been better. I think they've been better because they've been cleaner. They've been cleaner. Slareth said it to us a couple hours ago. 
when a play needs to be made, the Chiefs have made it. When a play needs to be made for the 49ers this year, they have very often not made it. You know what I mean? Yep. Renardo Green in Seattle the other night finally did. But it's like, you know, that whole thing we've done with the two, the Rams and Cardinals losses of the seven pick parlay where it's like, dude, you guys had seven chances to make one play and nobody did. The Chiefs very often this year, you get one chance to make a play and they do. They make it. Yeah. So that's why they're five and oh. And that to me, that is, that is better because they're cleaner. They've made fewer mistakes. Um, their defense has absolutely been better than the 49ers defense. That's not even close. Um, but sure, if you want to get into the quarterback, um, you love to bring up PFF. Yep. That's PFF's number one quarterback right now. And you know where Mahomes is? Oh, God, I bet he's probably at least halfway down the board. He's 10th. Okay. He's number 10 right now. And, yeah, Purdy is 88.2. Slightly number- ahead of Derek Carr. And then it's Burrow, Lamar, Jaden, CJ, Maker, Bayfield mm-hmm. in the MVP conversation. And then you get to Calamari and Geno and then Patrick Mahomes. Kyler Murray is ahead of Patrick Mahomes? Yeah. And that's again, interesting. it's, you know, his uh, his running numbers are pretty good. And that's where it's interesting in PFF land. Patrick Mahomes is number three among uh, quarterbacks in the run game. Josh Allen's one. Tua, who's been out for a long time, is two. So really Mahomes would be number two. Brock Purdy's not too far down. He's eighth in runs as a quarterback. Can I can I ask Randy so what was what's the end game of of the if I accept the premise what what's the end game or is that the end game? You were just saying that basically Brock Purdy has been better than Patrick Mahomes largely for a year and a half or are you in some way insinuating that like if given the opportunity, you would take Brock Purdy over Patrick Mahomes if you were starting a football team. No, I'm, I'm not sure I'd do that. Actually, I'm, I guarantee I would not do okay. that. But I think it just speaks to a, a larger point that there have been other reasons why the 49ers have been losing games, and it has absolutely nothing to do with, with Brock Purdy. And sometimes, I mean, this, this also goes back to often ways that that people try to attack Brock Purdy and and argue that he's not a very good quarterback. A lot of those arguments do not fit Brock Purdy. In fact, he's on the opposite end of the spectrum, and everything that you're saying about Brock is actually true about Patrick Mahomes of late. Hmm. Okay. He doesn't push the ball down the field. The the majority of his yards come after the catch. It's the opposite for Brock Purdy, but it's all 100% true for Mahomes. You know who it's even more true about what you're saying right now is is, is the guy we watched last night. It's Josh Allen. Right. I don't know. if I mean, thank God Amari Cooper's going there. Maybe Josh Allen will actually throw the ball more than two yards in front of him for the first time all year. The only time he did it was when he improvised and rolled out and hit Ray Davis down the middle of the field with what turned out to be, I guess, his longest completion to a running back in his career uh, is a stat that I heard. But watch the Buffalo Bills play football. Everything is right at the line of scrimmage. Interesting you say that because the numbers would indicate intended air yards per attempt. He's fourth. Who? Josh? Josh Allen. Okay. Completed air yards per completion. He's all the way down at 17. Okay, so maybe that's what I'm feeling. Right. So they do, you know, and I think that they'll throw it deep. They won't complete it. They huck it over everybody's head. The majority of it is dink and dunk and shorter throws that they're completing. And also Josh Allen as a runner has become one of the biggest threats in their offense. For sure, for sure. And everybody in the building who was thinking straight knew exactly that that's what he was going to do last night, and they still couldn't stop it. Yep. And he ended the game because of it. All right, a couple things. Uh, Baldy weighed in on this this morning on the Morning Roast. Uh, we'll play that for you in a second, then we'll take some calls. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMC FM and HD1 San Francisco, an Odyssey Sports Station, always live on the free Odyssey app. Twitch and YouTube powered by First NorCal Credit Union for a low-rate auto loan. Apply online or just ask for First NorCal Financing at the dealer. Here's what Baldy said with regard to Brock and Mahomes' name comes up. When I was watching it the other day, or Friday morning after the game, I thought he was very, very much like Mahomes. They, they both are very talented at extending plays, creating plays, creating offense, or just simply being able to buy time to throw the ball away. And so I think they both have that instinct. They both, if they probably put them in a 40-yard dash, they probably run about the same. They're probably both about 4'8", but they play faster than what that says just because of their angles, their ability to just hesitate, start, stop change direction like he's extremely talented i thought it was a big part 
That game was 23-17. You thought, you know, this could be very reminiscent of Arizona. They're letting them hang around. They're one play away from, you know, just the way Arizona mm-hmm. scored one. And then, you know, I thought they, you know, they made the necessary plays at the end. But I thought throughout the game, his ability, whether it's just to elude somebody inside a phone booth, get outside the pocket, double back and do the things that Mahomes does. If I put them side by side and you took the names off the back of the jersey, they're they're pretty they're pretty close to each other. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty same guy. Purdy well, and Mahomes. If you honestly, if you took away the <laughs> records and the rings and you just watched them play and you didn't know who was Mr. Irrelevant and who got traded up to be taken and who has three Super Bowls and who has none, they do play in many ways similarly. And I was noticing it earlier today how these offenses are similar, and especially now when Kansas City doesn't have a great wide receiver core, what they're doing now for me, and we'll get Greg Cosell's thoughts on Thursday, and he'll riddle me with verbal bullets and how wrong I am, but right. I see similar schemes, a lot of pre-snap motion and play action, and a lot of use of the tight end in the middle of the field. Mahomes isn't stepping back and slinging it very often. I saw three times against New Orleans where it was – Max Protect and Xavier Worthy, fastest guy in football. You run fast, and I'll throw it as far as I can, and let's see if that works. Mm -hmm. And it didn't, but that is one thing that scares me about Sunday because they're going to try that at least a couple of two, three times, and I wonder if the Niners, who Baldy has called slow, I wonder if they're going to be able to take away Xavier Worthy and his 4-2 speed. Also earlier today on 95.7 The Game, not PFF, but PFT, Pro Football Talk, and Mike Florio was asked if Brock Purdy looks the part of a $60 million quarterback. He is a guy who does what needs to be done within the confines of the Shanahan offense, plus he sprinkles in enough mobility to give you something when there's nothing there. It's not a lot of flash. There's not a lot of panache but he just gets it done. It's very meat and potatoes, but it's a good meal of meat and potatoes that he's serving up. Now, does that mean it gets him to $60 million a year? I don't know, but he's clearly earned a second contract, and they'll replace the final year of his current one, most likely, after this season with something. It just depends upon what that high-end number is. It depends upon how much he wants. Okay, I, I, I wonder, like, for instance, you know, Grandy, since you, you brought this up, like, to me... The, all I can do is tell you what I feel when I hear something like that. Like when I hear that, that's an example of maybe what what Grandy is talking about, where whatever happens on the field, and there's a. It's funny that we love Brock for his processing. I think there's a problem in America right now with processing what you see Brock Purdy do. There's completely a problem with what you're seeing. He's not seeing splash and panache. Then you're not watching the game. Thank you, Mark. I mean, you, I don't know. Like, what are you, you? You could look at almost any quarterback in the NFL right now, almost any of them, and you could say, well, Brock does the twirly and run all over, like, more than anybody. More than anybody. Is he that has, splash? He has made more improvisational plays. I would argue, than any quarterback I've watched this year. All of them. But, Grandy, to your point, and I, th- this is why I wanted to circle back to, to you guys on it today. I don't think Brock Purdy is Patrick Mahomes. Life doesn't work that way. You have to earn that. That man's got a trophy case full of rings. So you have to earn that. That's fine. I don't care about his stats and numbers or numbers and numbers or numbers. What I care about is, A lot of people, when they're looking at Brock Purdy, sound to me like the officials when they come out of the review booth in Seattle. I'm like, I'm sorry, did you not see that? They didn't see it. You you didn't see it? They didn't see it in New York, Mark. They didn't have that angle. Like That's what, to me, a lot of people feel like. That's what it feels like. It feels like you got a review wrong that all of us can see. And I do also think that a lot of this comes down to where you started and how dug in you are. And I know if I say the name, you're going to cringe because I've said oh, it many times. Okay. And he's somebody who has him. I think he has Brock Purdy ranked number 14. Oh, don't do it. And but that's a big Steven joke. Ruiz but in he, the ringer. It's not a joke. It, it has it to is. be. And you listen to Mike Florio, who knows far more than Steven Ruiz of the ringer ever will know. But Mike Florio is dug in. And he works with Chris Sims, who's also been 
slow to warm to the reality. So, Although starting to, more well, than Mike. You have to, because Mike talks about a lack of splash and panache. For me, splash is the big play. And as Granny was saying, he leads football in intended air yards. Those are splashy plays. And when you run around and scramble, and then run around and scramble again, and run around and scramble again, and then you make a good throw down the field, or you run for 13 yards in a first down, that's both splash and panache. And how much panache do you need a guy to have? Does going to the Super Bowl in your first full year as a starter, <laughs> does that count as panache? I don't know. I or just... I just don't know what we're looking at. And No, you know, no, no. Y- yes, you do. I don't know what we're they, hearing they from they people don't. who aren't looking at it. Honestly, for me, at times, the offense, it's almost a little too splashy. Too much, thank you. Take the easy stuff. Week, yeah. Stop, stop. With this, too much panache. Dump all it off to IU. Dump it off to Kittle. Yes. Dump it off to Juszczyk. Get splash. the easy eight yards, yeah. please. Like, like Brock, Brock snaps the ball, and like immediately I start hearing the Keystone Cops music. He's running around all over. He's running backwards. We're going left. Nope. Let's go back to the right. It's like, oh, my God. What happened to the Niners? Well, we said this last week because I said, you know, they're throwing the ball down the field too much. And you said, what did you just say to me? <laughs> and you were right. But and Grant and I talked about it yesterday. Like, there's got to be a happy medium. And I thought that against Seattle was a much better balance of. Agreed. Here's some play action and a quick throw. Here's a deep shot. Here's the middle. Here's the outside. I felt like the passing game was much more of a comfortable mix of all types of plays. Right, but literally the third play of the game. The Niners are backed up at like their own eight-yard line, and it's what, like third and four. And here goes Brock, and it's like run backwards, run sideways, and you're like, oh my gosh, you guys are right up against the end zone. And then he's like, we're going left, and he breaks left, and there's a linebacker right there, swinging a miss right off his back, shakes it, and then barrels into another tackler for a first down. Gets up and runs to the huddle. Yep. And then, beep, bop, and boop, jump on microphones the next day and go, he just does what Kyle asks him to do. What are you... Okay. And that was actually (laughs) back-to-back scrambles. uh, I know. The previous play, he scrambled up the middle for seven, and then third and two, the one you're talking about, he scrambles left, and he did the stop and the shimmy shake. Which looked pretty splashy to me. I, I, Shut I, out the Iowa State shimmy. And I just, he got I, four, and they I, moved the chains, and they ended up getting down to the seven and not scoring a TD. And but, kick and field goal. Well, you, you got to do but still, nine or things. The which splash is, and panache well, I was just, there for me. I hope everyone can hear what this is. This is not our eight millionth conversation of trying to convince people that Brock Purdy's good. This is a tightening of, of, of the screws here a little bit. I, I, again, I'm trying to figure out how on earth people are seeing what they're seeing. And, and it's amazing. You know, Steiny said something to me off air last week, and, and, and I won't have all the details of it, but the concept he was talking about was it was amazing. He was asked to remember something that he saw, and, and then he, he spit it out, and then he went back and watched it, and he goes, it turns out, Like, everything I remembered was completely incorrect. That was a car accident. Okay. It was about nine years ago at the old building right down there on 3rd Street, and he was walking after work, and he happened to be 10 feet from the corner, and a taxi cab and another car got involved in an accident and unfortunately resulted in a young girl getting hit by the vehicles and getting badly injured, not killed, but badly injured, He was an eyewitness. So he was talking to the officers. And he said, you know, the cab ran the red light and this and that, and they go through, and they're like, thank you, sir. And Steiny was shaking. Six months later, he goes for a deposition, and he lays the whole thing out. The cab ran the red, and this other car was in the right, and this and that, and they go, all right, sir. They press play on the surveillance video, and the cab didn't run the red light. In fact, the other car was the one that was wrong in the intersection. And the cab got hit, and he was absolutely gobsmacked. At his lack of, like, what he saw. What right. he thought he so saw that, that, wasn't that, what he saw. So that affected me. Because I literally, it's almost like, we got to go on the air and check ourselves. Yeah. Am I seeing this wrong? Is it is it me and you? Is Brock Purdy just dropping back and going, eh, here, you take it two yards in front of me. Kyle says, Come I on. throw it to you. That's right. That's Kyle right. schemed you open, I throw ball. Like, I watched the game. It didn't even say Purdy on the back of his jersey. It said Robot. 
Number 13. <laughs> it said, Robot. I thought it said Perdahan is what <laughs> I saw. <laughs> it, it, and, and is that it? Are we wrong? Is Brock just super boring? Drop back, three step, tap, ball, throw. Eh. That's not what I'm seeing. No. But it's what a lot of people are still telling us. Well, Brock Purdy is just a perfect manifestation and an extension of what Kyle Shanahan is telling him to do. Well, then Kyle's a madman. Apparently, Kyle sits him down on Wednesdays. All right, Brock, here's what we're going to do on third downs. Snap the ball, three-step drop, turn around, spin, flip, run backwards through the end zone, high-five a fan, stick one leg up, bounce on one leg for about three times, run around to the right, and then see if you can hug the ball up in the air and maybe Juwan, who knows, might come down with it. Possibly. Like, is that what... Apparently, Brock's an extension of Kyle. Right. Well, then Kyle's drunk. Well, because if you want to look at the actual facts... <laughs> what, is, and what are we seeing? What we're seeing, Mark, and I luckily I have the time to watch the games twice, and so I really get a chance to watch specific things, and I'm looking at the actual stats, and the names Caleb Williams, Kyler Murray... Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen. Those are all very mobile, very good with their legs quarterbacks. Brock Purdy has scrambled more times than all of those guys. He scrambled the fourth most in football, more than Lamar, more than Kyler Murray, more than Caleb Williams, more than Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson. So, Who, who, who are the three in front of him? Uh, Jaden Daniels, okay. 32 scrambles. And a rookie, sure. Deshaun Watson, who gets pressured at the second highest rate in football. Hot, hot mess of a football team. Okay. I'd say poor guys running for his life, but good. Run for your life. <laughs> okay, and who's the other one? Bo Nix. Bo Nix. With one more scramble. And well, again, you, that's an offensive line that's not great. Well, and you notice two of them are playing their first five football games. Two of the three are playing their first football yeah. games. And what do you do? When you're a rookie, one read, it's not there. I'm out of here. I'm going to start running. So, Brock Purdy, I want you to say that slower. Brock Purdy is scrambling more than Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray. Josh Allen, <laughs> uh, Caleb Williams, C.J. Stroud, and, you know, Justin Fields. These are all, you know, these are all quarterbacks who <laughs> That's so funny. are more athletic and you probably better with their legs than Brock, yet Brock Purdy, some sort of a robot, he's just back there doing robotic things. No, he's... He's improvising maybe too much. But that's a, and that's a fair question, I think. I mean, he's, Is he taking off too soon? Well, and I, again, I don't know. The Seattle game, I saw him showing a little bit more patience in the pocket and also you know, a little bit more willingness to just either throw it away or, like Grandy's saying, just check it down. Instead of four pirouettes and an 11-second drop back and then you know, firing it away. 